my dear friends, it's me, Ksenia. Ksenia in a hat. <laughs> because firstly, I didn't like my hairstyle today. And, and secondly, it's a fall, it's time to be cozy, right? So let's be in a hat today. Why not? So, dear friends, today we are talking about, we continue talking about cases. And today we're gonna speak about endings of the cases. So, firstly, before I gave this information, I thought like, I can give you endings for my first video where I just talking about cases. But then I realized that I have to say so many things to you that it should be a separate video where we just talking only about endings because, dear friends, it's enough to talk about. <laughs> so, dear friends, yeah. If you are interested, if you are ready for this, we can really start. So, let's do this. So, my dear and lovely, we are talking about endings of the case. So today, dear friends, you really need to remember many things which we've been talking before. And firstly, that you need to remember it is what the declension was. So dear friends, I hope that you remember that in Russian language there are three different declensions and specifically for those declensions there will be specific endings. So yeah, dear friends, declensions are really, we really need to know. So dear friends, firstly, you need to remember declensions. Then it's also, you need to remember the phonetic. Because today, for each of the dec declension, there will be specific versions of the endings. And those versions will be connected with the pronunciation of the words. So, for each declension, we will have hard, soft, and for some of the declensions, also mixed versions of the ending. So, dear friends, yes, you need to remember six cases, so there are six different endings, for three declensions, and for three declensions, there are three versions. So, there are a lot of endings. My dear friends, don't be already so much afraid. It will be later. Right now, you shouldn't. It's, it's Still, it's okay. So, dear friends, actually, those endings will be really similar for those versions. And we will right now talk about this and you will understand everything. So, I think I already told you enough. And we can really start, as always. We firstly start and then we really start. So yeah, let's start really. <laughs> so dear friends, firstly, we're gonna speak about endings of the first declension. And I remember you that ending, it is what changes in the word, usually in the very end of the word, when we change the word by cases. And endings for the first declension was a ah or ya. Yeah. And your friends, here, here already, let's remember why it was a ah or ya. Yeah. Your friends, do you remember this table? So it was about vowels. And we've been speaking about the fact that in Russian language there are two types of vowels one sound vowels and two sound vowels. So one sound vowels, for example, a, o, e, and so on. And there are, we hear there only one sound. And for the two sound vowels, we hear two sounds. And it will be sound, one of the sounds from one sound vowel plus y. Actually, firstly goes y, and then one of the sounds of one sound vowel. And how these vowels are connected one to each other, you can see by this table. For example, you see A, and two sound vowels will be Ya. 
So there is already Y and A, and we pronounce Ya. So I won't talk about this too much, because it was already in my pronunciation video about vowels, but yeah, it's kind of helpful. But yeah, A, Ya is ending for the first declension, and it is usually feminine, but some words also can be masculine. For example, Papa, Dziadzia, it's masculine words, but they have ending A, and they are first declension words. And right now let's speak about the endings and firstly dear friends right now i will show you the table which i did by myself and <laughs> really proud about because dear friends here you see the endings for the mostly all situations for the first declension here it is i did it specially for you so look and dear friends as you see there are versions. There are hard consonant before ending, soft consonant of vowel before ending, and mixed. So what does it mean? If we have hard consonant before ending, there will be one specific mm, changes of the ending. If there is soft consonant before ending, there will be another type of endings. And if there is g, k, h before ending, there will be third version of the endings. Yeah, difference. Firstly, sounds crazy, but we will see that it's not so terrifying. So, actually, dear friends, how do you understand that the consonant before sounds hard or soft. Actually, you can understand that also by ending. So, if there is ending A, it means that before this A, there is a hard consonant, because we pronounce it hard if it is, if after consonant there is one sound letter. So, we say A, it means that consonant before pronounced hard. And here we have an example, mama. So, we pronounce sound m hard, mama. We don't pronounce mia mia, we pronounce mama. And for the, th for the soft version, we have ending ya. And why it's so? It's because this ya, if we have situation consonant plus two sound vowel, what happened, dear friends? I hope you remember. So this ya, turns to a, ah, but y makes consonant before sound soft. So there is already no ya, but consonant sounds soft, and we have a. Ah. So we pronounce zemle a, ah, zemla, zemle a, ah, zemla. So there is still kind of a ah ending, right? But uh, if we write this word, we see letter ya. And it means that it is our soft version. And as I already said, for the mixed version, we will have g, k, h before ending. And ending will be a for those. So, dear friends, let's look at the table once again and we'll see the endings. And we will compare them. So, you will understand that not really something is terrifying here. Yes, you need to learn a lot, but not so much as firstly you may think. So, dear friends, why actually you shouldn't be afraid of those versions? It's because actually those versions, the right in language, just for the fact that we could pronounce sounds more easily. So, if we have soft sound, to make the soft sound, we really need these two sound letters, which will make the sound before sound soft. That's why actually for the soft version, we have the same endings. They actually sound the same, but just to make consonant before sound soft, we need two sound letters. That's why we use pairs. For example, look, accusative, ma, 
mu ending u. And what is the pair for u? It's you, right? That's why for the accusative soft version, we will have ending u, ziem lu. And still, you see, we still pronounce u in the end. But to make consonant before sound soft, because it's soft version, we need to put this two sound letter u, which makes consonant before sound soft. Y disappears from the sound u, and we already have only soft l and u in the end. Zem lu, zem lu, zem l u lu, zem lu. Very friends, and it will be so for the hard and soft versions. So actually, you just need to learn hard version, and you just need to know what is the pair for the one sound vowel. And also, don't forget that u and e they are, they are all they both are one sound letters, but they are sisters. And when we have u in hard version, it will be e for the first for the soft version. So yeah, your friends, not so many to learn. Just you need to understand this idea, your friends. And right now about mixed version, what's specific here? So actually, all endings for g k h will be the same as for hard version, but g K, H can go with G, K, H. It can be U ending after those letters. That's why only for U ending will be changed for E. And you can see this in the table. So, friends, that's actually it. I think you already understand the idea. And let me read the examples for you so you would understand my table actually. So, firstly goes nominative, and we have for a singular form ending a. So, for example, ma ma. So, a in the end is the ending. For soft version, we have ending ya, ya, zem la, ending ya. And for the mixed version, we have also ending a as it is for hard, sum ka. Yes? So, let's go to the genitive. For the genitive, for hard version, it will be ending u. So, ma, my. You see, this ending in the end, a, changes to the u. That's why ending is the changeable part of the word. It always changes when we change the case. And this ending shows us what the, the case is. And also, what uh, is it a plural or singular form of the word. So, yeah. Ma, my. For the soft version, we will have zem, li. Zem, li. And here we have ending e. So it's a sister of u of u for the soft version, and for the mixed version, we will also have ending e sumki because there can't be g k h. All right. All right. Okay. Let's go to the dative dativny padesh. There will be ending ye for singular, and look, it will be the same for each because ye will be the same for each of the case. Yeah, possible for everyone. And actually, this uh, yeah will make consonant before in hard version here sound soft. But we don't care for some reason for this. <laughs> All right, we say ma mia ending here, zemli ending here, i sumki ending here. And then we go to accusative, dear friends. And there will be ending u for the uh, hard version, u for the soft version, and for mixed, it again will be hard version because it's not u, right? So we will say ma mu ending u, zem lu ending u, and sum ku ending u. 
Tell your friends. The next will be instrumental, творительный. And here we should be already more attentive. So, we say ma moi ending oi for um, hard version. For soft version, it's supposed to be yo, right? Because o, yo is the pair. But it can also be ye, ye or yoi. And how we understand should we put ending ye or yoi? So, dear friends, if the word always have uh, stress at the ending, it will be yoi because yo is always under the stress. But if the word won't if the, if the ending won't be stressed, it will be ending ye because ye and yo they are also sisters like e and u and sometimes they help to each other. So yeah, and we have such example examples zimloi ending yoi and it's stressed. And for example, the word puli pula pula. Ending is not for the stress. Uh, ending is not stressed, and we say pulley, and ending will be ye. So yeah, dear friends, pay attention to this. And for the mixed version, it will be hard ending. Oi, sum koi. All right, dear friends. And the last ending, it will be ye for each of the forms. Ma me. Земле and сумке. So, е is for everything. And your friends, as you see, the endings is not unique for each case. They sometimes re uh, are similar. One ending is similar for many cases. For example, like dative and prepositional, they have the same ending. So, yeah. So, still not so much to learn. A lot to learn, but not so much, right? <laughs> it could be more <laughs> you see it's possible but now we still understand that not so easy to learn russian that's why you see how some life hacks for you <laughs> very friends and right now let's speak about plural form so for plural nominative for hard version it will be ma my for soft endings here it is our friend Friend of u, e, sister, e. So we say zem li, zem li. And for the plural form, say me, please tell me what we need to do. It should be ending e because there can't be g, k, h, right? So right now let's talk about genitive and genitive form, dear friends. You should be really attentive with this. Why so? It's because for genitive we have zero ending. And I hope that you already understand that zero ending means that we take our ending for, for example, singular uh, form of the word in nominative, for example, from mama. And we take away this a, threw it away. And here we get mom and it will be the genitive form with zero ending. And why you should be attentive for this? It's because of mm, following situation. So let's look at the words, at the examples. So genitive, uh, genitive case, zero ending for heart, zero mom. And then we go to the soft version. And here we, ha we will have soft sign in the end. Yeah, so to pronounce uh, si sound in the end, soft. Soft sound, soft sign helps us to pronounce sounds soft. And here we get word zemil. And dear friends, nothing strange going on, nothing weird. You don't see this. I think you see that there is, for some strange reason, a uh, sound ye between two consonants in the end before m and L letters, we get ye. So it's not zemel, it's zemel. So dear friends, why it's so and how to work with this? 
Dear friend, this situation is called fleeting Volvo. And how it happens? What is it? Let's discuss this. So, if we have such situation with zero ending, yes, and we have not one consonant in the end, like in the first version, mum, there is only m in the end, and it's hard, easy to pronounce, mum, mum, nothing hard. But if we have two consonants in the end, like here, zemul, 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 there are two consonants, M and L letters, yeah? So it's already, for Russians, hard to pronounce. And that's why we put Volvo between those letters to pronounce the word easily. And it will be letter, it can be letter Ye and, e, uh, ye and O two letters and when we need to put ye and o we will talk about later but right now just understand that if we have zero endings and we have two consonants in the end like m l we need to put something between them to pronounce the word easily zemel for us sounds better than zemel maybe you also think that it's a life hack, but maybe you think that Russian is crazy. Two versions, still okay if you think one of them. <laughs> Sorry, friends. Yeah, the mail. And here we also have zero ending. Yeah, I put soft sign, but it's just uh, you to remember that if it is soft versions, we have to make soft so sound in the end. And that's why we put soft sign, L. but still it's zero ending actually. It, it's not ending like soft sign ending because soft sign doesn't make sound. It just makes so uh, it ju just make consonant before sound soft, but it doesn't have a sound. So it's zero ending. And for the mixed version, we have hard version, sumak. And here, dear friends, you also see we have word sumka. So we put away the vowel, uh, the ending, and it will be sumk, sumk. And we don't, we don't like how it sounds. So for zero ending, we will put vowel inside. And look, here we already have o sound so sumak sumak so it can be ye or o and when each which sound we should put we will discuss this already friends but a bit later right now we still talk about cases so right now we can speak about dative and look it will be ending um and for the soft version yam because a uh, and ya yeah, it's a pair. So ma mam zem lam and for mixed version it will be hard version. Sum kam. All right, all right. So dear friends, the next is accusative. Whoa! And look, something is going on there. Why? Because we have two versions of the case, dear friends. And here you will understand why I say that you need right now to remember everything that we've been talking about before. Do you remember we've been talking about animated and inanimated words? So animate in Russian, mostly words, we think that the word is animated if it can move it can go somewhere and if if it can eat so for example plants are not alive in the language because when this category becomes in language there wasn't understanding of people that for example plants are alive right now we know this but those people didn't so that's why it's still so in the language so animated or inanimated words and there are two different endings for animated and inanimated words in plural form for first declension. For second declension, it will be not so. So, yeah, let's speak about our declension, first declension. So, we have zero ending, once again, zero ending, if the word is animated. So, the ending actually will be the same with genitive. And here we see the form 
мам, богинь, кошек. Yeah. And if it is, if the word is animated, we will have ending ы or и, which are like for the nominative form. So it will be, for example, розы, roses, земли, and сумки. So such an idea, dear friends. Please remember this. Next is instrumental case. And here it will be ending ами or ями. So for example, мамами, but землями, and once again сумками. All right. And the last is prepositional case. Предложный падеж. And there are ending ах, ях. О мамах, мамах, ах, землях, ях, and сумках, ах. So, dear friends, that is about first declension. And we can get to the second declension, right? <laughs> so, dear friends, here you can see the table for the second declension. And I'd like to remember you that second declension we have for masculine nouns with zero ending. And also for neuter nouns with ending o or ye or yo. Okay? So let's speak about this. And let's start once again with singular firm nominative. For the nominative, for the masculine, as we already know, it will be zero ending because as I said, Second declension is for such type of words. And if, if, when we speak about uh, declensions, how we understand? We understand the declension by singular nominative form of the word. So here we see singular nominative, nominative form of the word. And for the masculine word stall, it should be zero ending. And it is so. For the neutral words, we have ending o or ye, and here we see the ending o, зеркало, right? For the soft version, there will be zero ending, but here we have soft sign in the end because it's soft version. So, конь, for example, or парень. And neutral is ending ye, so it can be ye or yo, right? Any friends, for the mixed version, I give you examples from masculine words, so there will be zero ending. Pituch, sapok. Okay? So, let's go to the genitive. For the genitive, there will be a ending for singular words. A sta la. For, for, for soft version, we're gonna have a goes to ya, so it will be ka nya. Парня, поля, ending я. And for the mixed, it will be again а. Петуха, сапога. So а, я, ending of genitive form singular. Dative, ending у or ю. Сталу, hard version. Коню, полю, soft version. And петуху. U again for the mixed. And here we have, dear friends, accusative form. And, dear friends, for masculine, not for neutral, which are also from second declension, only for, for masculine, we have this idea with different type of endings, not only for plural form, like we have in first declension, but we have also these versions for the Singular form. So look, ending a if it is animated, and here we get word uh, word cat kata kata if animated masculine, and it will be the same ending as it is in genitive, and zero ending if it is inanimated like stall, and you see the ending is the same as nominative form. And if the word is neutral, it will be ending o, yes, like it is in nominative form. I hope you understand this. And about soft versions, it will be the same. 
If it is animated, it will be ending not a uh, already, but ya, yeah, kanya. And if word in animated, it will be soft version of the zero ending. So it will be soft sign in the end. For example, rule. Rule. <laughs> soft sign in the end. And the next form will be instrumental. And here we get ending om for heart. Stalom and endings yem, yom, depending on the stress. If it uh, if it is soft version, so we have polem, we have stress at the o, polem, not at the end, and kanyom ending yom is stressed, and that's why there is yo. All right. And the last is prepositional, and there will be once again ending yeah, yeah, quite easy for prepositional. Everywhere is yeah. Dear friends, how it would be amazing if the endings won't be the same only for prepositional case, but for each case it will be one type of endings, no matter of the declension, right? But it wouldn't be a Russian language if it would be so, right? So still, we love Russian for this, I hope. <laughs> Dear friends, we've been talking about singular and let's talk about plural form. And here we get ending or e, right? But here you also can see ending a. So, dear friends, actually, there is a list of words. I will give you the short list of these words because it's hard to learn everything, and some some words are really specific, and I'm not sure that you will ever use those words. But there is a list of words. Here it is, which you need to remember that there is ending not we as it is always but a and if it is soft version it can be ending ya like for example друг друг друзья yeah so yeah sometimes situation happens and it can be ending a so but in general it will be ending u or e all right and as you see, for mixed version, it will be ending e because once again, what it can it can't be g k h ending. All right. So let's go to the genitive. For the genitive form, it will be ending of for the hard consonant before ending. But here we get something specific. For soft version, it won't be yev or yov, but it will be yey, ka, ney, palei. So please pay attention to this, that it won't be the same like it should be for hard version, but only with another consonant. Here we get something specific for some reason. Dear friends, sometimes I also start, to start being mad for Russian. Why it's so? Oh, okay, okay. We will just agree. What should we do, right? So, let's go to the dative. And for the dative, plural form, we will have ending am and yam. Here it is very easy. Stalam, kanyam. For accusative word, we will just again will have different versions if it is animated word or not. So, ending of if animated and it is like genitive and as it is like genitive that's why for the soft version it will be ending ye for example ka ne for inanimated it will be endings like for the nominative and it will be ending u or e and for the neutral words it will be ending Ah, no, it will be the same ending like it is for nominative form, right? Okay, dear friends, let's go further. And it is instrumental case. And here we get endings ami or yami. For example, stalami, but ka nyami. All right, all right. And for the prepositional case, here we get endings 
ach, yach once again as it was for the first declension. O stalach or o kanyach. I say o because it's it's so unusual to use prepositional without prepositional without prepositions. That's why I put o like preposition just for example. But okay, let's say without this. Stalach kanyach. Ach, yach, ending. I already want to go further, but remember that we forget to talk about something. Look at the word parin for singular nominative. And look then for the word genitive form, genitive singular form. What's going on? So we had parin, but then it goes parnia. Dear yeah, friends, here it is once again situation with fleeting word. But if for our first declension there will be uh, there was fleeting word in genitive case when it was zero ending, here we have such form for the uh, nominative case with fleeting ending. So we get ye pa rien. And when we start changing the words, for Russian, it's it's already too much to say parenya. So so this fleeting word ye, uh, fleeting letter ye goes away from the word. And for the next cases where we already have not zero ending but endings with the letters, we already don't need this fleeting word. But dear friends, I will give you the table later. But for the uh, masculine words, there isn't so much words where, where we have this situation with fleeting words. That's why if you see that in the end there is consonant, vowel, ye yeah, or yo, and a consonant once again, don't think that you should put away this consonant for the, for the next cases. No, it's, it's not always will be the same. Because I will give you the same word. What you see? Parin. And here you get word tulen, very similar mm, last letters in the end. But we will say genitive tulenia. So you see, here for Russian it's not problem to pronounce this year. No, it sounds good for Russian tulenia. Yeah, why not? But parinia, no way. No, we need to say parnia. Dear friends, crazy Russian going on. Dear friends, and right now let's speak about third declension. And it is third declension is for feminine words with zero endings. And the specific thing here that there is a soft sign in the end for this word. And here, dear friends, we will have only two versions. It can be hard consonant or soft consonant before. And that's it. No more gkh. Okay, and here we will have sh and z only hard sound. And dear friends, why hard consonant? It's it will be z sh. It's because only z sh are always hard consonant, and it's no matter that after it will be soft side. We just put it, but still we pronounce the sound hard because there isn't. There is no soft sounds for z and sh, okay? So, for nominative we will have zero ending, but still we put soft sign in the end, like mysh or rys, for example. Yeah, I read hard and soft versions. For genitive it will be e ending for both. Mysh, rysi ending e. So the next will be dative, and here we get e, and we will say my, she, and ri, si. Still, endings are the same. For accusative form, again zero ending. For example, mish, ri. For instrumental, there will be firstly soft sign and then ending u. For both versions, mish, u, ri, u. Dear friends, I think that you already like third declension, right? And prepositional ending e. Here it is e, not e already. E. 
мышерыси. And dear friends, do you do you hear how I pronounce мыши? We write ending e, but I pronounce it like u because sh is always hard, and yeah, we can't pronounce it soft. It will be already another letter. So, dear friends, about plural, it will be e ending for both versions. If it is plural nominative, мы, ши, ри, си. It will be ending ей. If it is genitive, мы, шей, ри, си, ри, си. It will be am ending. If it is dative hard version, мы, шам. And it will be ям ending. If it is soft. So here it is the difference. Am and ям, ри, сям. Мы шам, мы шам, ам ending, and ри сям, ям, okay? So the next will be accusative form, and here for plural we have the same situation with animated and inanimated. So we will have ending е if it is animated, and и if it is inanimated. Мы шей рисей, and броши. Тени. Okay. Instrumental ending ами. Мы шами, ры, сями. And prepositional ending ах and ях, if it is soft. So, мы шах, ры, сях. And your friends, you see that the difference between hard and soft versions, it will be only for dative plural for instrumental plural and for prepositional plural. And your friends, also pay attention to the word дочь and мать, daughter and mother. We, we need to put suffix ер for all other forms of the word if we change word by the case. So, the, the form дочь and мать will be only for singular form nominative. And for all others, before ending, we should put suffix ер. For example, матери, дочерей, матерью, дочерях. There is suffix ер also. But it's just, you know, if you will need this word for some reason. Because in, in Russian language, yeah, we have also... What is it? Deutsch and Mat. It's daughter and mother. But you know, this form is really formal. And we usually don't say Deutsch and Mat. We usually say Mama. Yeah, you, you know this word. And for a daughter, we usually say Deutschka. Deutschka. Ending A, so it's for declension. So yeah, this Deutsch and Mat, we usually don't say so. And you, you don't need to say Ja Deutsch. Своей матери. I'm daughter of my mother. Now, я дочка своей мамы. We say usually this. And your friends, for the for those for whom this information wasn't enough, do you remember we learned these specific words with мя in the end, like время, имя, пламя, and so on. So, for those 10 words, we have specific endings. And here it is a table. I don't want to read it because it already takes too much time from us. So, yeah, here it is a table for those who are really right now, you know, want to have a challenge. Dear friends, but right now, what I want to speak with you about is the stresses. And after this topic, you will get a stress, of course. I will promise you. So, dear friends, if before it you shouldn't be worried, right now you can be already. So, dear friends, my favorite topic, stresses. Favorite in commas, because I hate it as well as I think all of you. So, about stresses. Actually, in Russian, stress... Is the thing which is really unlogic. 
and we can't really understand when, in what situation, stress should be here or there, okay? And dear friends, when we change the word by cases, maybe you already find it out, when we change the word by cases, the stress can be changed. So sometimes it's like regular, but sometimes it can be changed, dear friends. And that's why I get ready a special table for you about stresses. It's not perfect. You still can make mistakes using this table, but still it kind of will help you. That's why, dear friends, please have a look. Firstly, dear friends, we will have rule for the ending, which is not under the stress, and the stress is unchangeable. So here you are some rules for this. Look at this table, please, and pay attention to it. So, dear friends, the next table is when ending is under the stress, ending is under the stress, and it's again unchangeable stress. How to understand that it is unchangeable stress? Here you are, the situations and examples. And, dear friends, the last, it will be changeable stress. So, how to understand that, that the stress is changeable? You see the example. So, usually it's connected with declensions, it's connected with the count of syllables, yeah? So, you see. So, dear friends, please take this table. I hope that it will be helpful for you, but still, it's not 100%. So sometimes this rule wouldn't work. So how I really recommend you right now to, to work with the words, how to learn the cases. Dear friends, usually when you start learning the new word, for example, you want to learn the word cap, take this word and go to the wiki dictionary. Go to the wiki dictionary and there you will find this word and you will see each of the case of this word in singular and plural and how i will recommend you to do firstly try to change the word by cases by yourself without looking to this table and then check it and pay attention for your mistakes so when you do mistakes so you take this word and for example, you, and you start checking yourself with help of this table. For example, you think, okay, it's second declension, one syllable, it should be changeable ending. And you check in the table, are you correct or not? And if not, you pay attention to this and try to remember, okay, I should remember that there I will have problems, that I need to remember those endings, those situations, because it is out of rule. Work with this like, work with words like this. Dear, yeah, dear friends, it takes time, but it's really the idea how to work it. It's, it will really make you progress in the end. And then you need to use this word in context to start understanding it, okay? And your friends, the last table my gift for you will be following about this fleeting vowel. I told you that there are different versions of the fleeting vowel. Sometimes it's O, sometimes it's Ye. So, dear friends, here you get a table and pay attention to this table only for what kind of words? Only for feminine and neutral, not for masculine. For masculine, it, this rule doesn't work, okay? So, only for feminine and neutral. If it is zero ending for feminine and neutral, it can be fleeting vowel if in the end of the word there are more than two consonants. And you should put bef between these consonants or or ye. Yeah. And here you get the rule for this situation. And right now, dear friends, about masculine. Actually, for masculine, I would recommend you just to learn 
when there is fleeting vowel or not, because in most situations there won't be fleeting vowel. Usually no. And here I give you the list of more um, of the most useful words which have this fleeting vowel. So yeah, dear friends. For example, you get a new word also. Open Wiki Dictionary and check, is there such problem with fleeting vowel or not? So, my dear and lovely, you see, I was really excited for today because actually, when I get it ready, these materials, I get, you see how many tables today you get. And please, dear friends, use these tables, print them if you can, write them down if you are a good student. So yeah, please use this material because they are helpful and I've been working for them really long time because I want to make them perfect and you will understand how it works. And dear friends, don't forget about Wiki Dictionary as well because it's a great, um, it's a great help for you, okay? But for today, dear, dear and lovely, I want to say that that's actually it for this video. But I love you very, 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 very much. And we will see each other very soon, so I could really rush you, dear friends. Love you. Bye-bye.